One of the interesting things about um, the fact I do my own editing is I just finished editing episode 12 of season 6. Just like literally an hour ago. So then I was going to sit down and watch this episode, which is the third episode of season 7, right? So there's three episodes in between what I edited and this one. But it's been literally five weeks since I watched any of this. So I watched the previous episodes, you know, episode two of season seven, just to kind of remind myself of everything that was happening, right? So in watching episode 12 of season six, as I edited, and then watching episode two of season seven, I saw a lot of parallels. You know, you have Sally's mother driving her to the interview for the boarding school. Then you have Sally's father and they're having all those car conversations. And just, and of course, this is when they reconcile. You know, in car conversation, they go to the diner, then in a car again, and all this stuff. But, you know, there was a lot of parallels between the car conversation. You know, just the fact they're in the car, you got the shitty green screen. But she longs to be close to her father. She doesn't long to be close to her mother. Her father is objectively a worse person than her mother. Just as an outside-looking-in human being. But her mother is a controlling bitch and just a, an overall bad mother. Whereas Don is, seems to be a pretty good father. There's a couple notable exceptions. He'll blow off spending time with his, with his kids. We've seen that in earlier seasons. I think season four and five are really... Probably season five, actually, now I think about it. There was a big problem like, you know, Megan would be watching the kids while he's at work the whole time they there. So that's a shitty father. Okay, yeah, you know, there's that. But when he's with them, what we see on screen, he has a great relationship with his, with his kids. He spends time with them. He has fun with them. He's not criticizing them all the time. He's not controlling them. He doesn't try to control what they do. So, of course, somebody like Sally is going to respond better to somebody who doesn't try to control it versus somebody who does try to control it. So that's why she longs to be with her father, be close to him, and doesn't long to be close to her brother. And I think she's been really struggling for these three episodes where she was kind of estranged from her father. And I'm glad he met her more than halfway to try to repair that. And it seems like he did repair it. The other fascinating thing is uh, West Coast, East Coast politics and all that stuff that's <laughs> happening in the business. Like, you know, the shitty phone, Pete going off as usual, Bob, like, you know, still getting shit done and all that stuff. So one more thing before we get started here. Um, there were some comments and uh, let me see which episode this was. It was for episode 11 of uh, season six. It's uh, part three. If you're interested in going back and reading all these comments, there's quite a lot of back and forth between John Johnson and the comment Bill Johnson. Huh, I wonder if there's a relation there. Probably not. Johnson's a pretty common name. But anyway, Bill Johnson started the comment thread. I answered and then John Johnson chimed in and we went back and forth a little bit here. But it was about, it was about Bob and how a lot of people didn't like his character. And about the show in general, how it just didn't do a very good job of talking about Gay people or uh, minorities, especially black people. I don't think we've seen a single Hispanic or Asian character on the show that I remember. But, so, black people. And here's the problem with that first. We'll talk about that first. And I'm not making excuses for the show. When you set a, a, a story in the past, we're talking about novels, TV shows, movies, whatever. You have a big problem on your hands. There is racism and there's sexism in the past. Some of it really fucking hates there. And if you're showing a person in power, they presumably have some ability to influence the events. Typically not. Like, say there's a thousand rich people in Boston in 1820, okay? Now, there's a lot of racism, even though there's no slavery in Boston in 1820, I don't think. But there's still a lot of racism there's a lot of sexism. Say there's a thousand people who have money who have power, right? You show one character, that one character isn't going to change systemic racism and systemic sexism. They're incapable of it. Nor would they in most cases. Because 99% of the people, now there are exceptions because movements were started. You know, but 99% of the people were raised in such a way and had this, such a mindset they didn't see the racism. They were raised in privilege they didn't see the sexism. They were raised in privilege, right? Like, so they didn't see what was wrong with the world. So they lived their lives in their bubbles. And unless they had some personal experience, like a half-brother was in a situation or their sister or something bad happened because of sexism, even then maybe they wouldn't see it. But like, 
unless they had a personal reason to become emotionally invested, they would not see the issues. It's just the way it was. We had plenty of evidence. There's letters written that, that you know, most of the people, that's what it was. So they could have been very good people otherwise. They could have been um, religious. They could have, like, you know, give you a shirt off their back. Maybe they, they give to the poor. They spend two days a week just out there physically helping other underprivileged people. They could be the best people in the world. They didn't treat their wife bad. You know, male, some male protagonists, right? They didn't treat their wife bad, but they were sexist and they were racist because everybody was back then. 99% of the people were. Like I said, there are exceptions. But those exceptions are extremely rare. So that's just if you take any random person. If you were, okay, this is a better example. If, if nine, Let's say, to be charitable, 93% of the people were racist and sexist on a systemic level, not even on a, you know, I want to kill these people, and I personally believe that, you know, these people are inferior and all this stuff, just because of society. That's just how they looked at things. 93%. So if you pull one random person out of the past and you bring them forward, you do that a hundred times, 93 of the people you pull are going to be racist and sexist. So that's just the way it was. So here's your problem. If you depict life back then, then your protagonist has to be racist and sexist because that's just the, that's the odds, right? The overwhelming odds are they would be. But then if they, they are... The audience now in 2020 is going to think they're an asshole and they're not going to root for them. So you can't do that. So what do you do? You make them progressive. You make them, they're the one person who feels completely differently and their hands are tied. They can't do nothing about it, but they feel completely different. They speak out and all this stuff. It's not realistic. So either you portray it the way it actually was and then people hate your character. Or you have a fantasy world where people back then were like way more outspoken than they actually were, which means you're destroyed in history. So which one do you do? That's the problem you have when you set things in the past, when you have a story take place in the past. Which one do you do? Most shows take the safe route and they have their characters be progressive. Even though it's not realistic, so they distort history. Yeah, they're the one character who's progressive in this world of racist and sexist, right? Or you just pretend the problems don't exist, which is what most shows, movies, TV shows, and, and you know, uh, books do. That's not the story they want to tell. They want to tell a story about somebody who wants to assassinate the president back in 1820. They don't have the time, mental space, or energy to navigate how to depict the racism and sexism that actually took place back then. That's not the story they want to tell. You know, so it's just, it's a problem. It's a conundrum. How do you navigate that? Now, this is long-form storytelling. They had 92 episodes. They had time to do this. If you're talking about a 90-minute movie, you ain't got time to deal with this shit. You just pretend it doesn't exist. Maybe have them speak out a couple times. That's it. This 92 episodes. So, yes, I do think the show, as I've seen so far, did not do a great job depicting uh, gay characters or... Uh, the, the racist situations back then. Racist and sexist situations. Well, I guess they've done a, a lot of work. Actually, I take it back. They've done a lot of work addressing the sexism. That's been one of the core things in the show, right, actually. That's a story they wanted to tell. So they devoted all this time to it. They didn't want to tell the story of racism. Even though they've had stories where brushed on it, you talk about Martin Luther King, you, you know, and they, um, they had every character here emotionally invested in Martin Luther King dying. And I wonder what it would have actually been like if you take like 20 p random people from the past, from when it happened, how many of them would actually give a shit? Who knows? That I don't know. Probably not as many that as cared on the show. But so they wanted to tell the story about sexism. They didn't want to tell the story about gay characters or racism. So they kind of avoided it for the most part. They hired a black person, but they did it because they kind of tricked themselves into having to do it, right? Now they've got a couple other black characters they've hired on the show who Peggy treated like shit last episode. At least they're not, you know, they're not shying away from that. If she's going to be an asshole, she's going to be an asshole to everybody. And uh, I think it was John Johnson. Yeah, John Johnson um, was the one saying that, like, it's always the queer characters are um, uh, shock value twists and you know, all this stuff. And, and, you know, and it is interesting, too, with Sal. He brought up Sal. I thought they were going to go somewhere with that, and they never really did. You know, it, it's interesting. 
Because, uh, what's the guy's name? Leo, the, the guy who's in charge of the cigarette company. He made unwanted advances on Sal. And it would have been a very different story if they had been unwanted advances on a straight man. Because then you're talking about somebody who's straight and somebody who's gay is trying to force themselves on them. It's, it's assault either way. It's trying to force itself either way. But like it's just a different dimension where if um, the fact that Sal could have potentially been interested, but he was not interested, right? I think that's just, to me, that's more interesting because that was Sal's orientation. So he could have been open to Leo's advances, but he didn't want to. That, that, that's not a guy he's attracted to. As opposed to it wouldn't matter there was never a chance in hell that, say, you know, Don would have wanted Leo's advances or would have ever accepted it. There is a chance in hell that Sal was because he had that orientation. So, you know, for for me, that was an interesting storyline, but then they used that storyline to get rid of him and we never see him again, where a lot of other characters came back. And um, for the good or for the bad, I, like, uh, what was the name of that one guy who came back who was part of the cult for that one episode? I could have done completely done without that. Like, I don't know what the hell they were doing with that, what they were trying to do, what kind of story they were trying to tell. Maybe they just want the actor back for another episode. I don't understand. It leads a whole tragic air to that whole thing. Like, what what the hell? But then, you know, you bring back Danny Strong, you know. That had a point to it. That was, that was hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, they brought those other characters back. We haven't seen Sal. And I presume, you know, he says that, I guess he's telling me we won't see Sal in these last 12 episodes either. You know, now that I think about that, it's kind of a spoiler. But that's the, the, what I can get from that inference. But yeah, I just... Uh, I think it's extremely difficult to navigate a period piece and have it be realistic, but also have it be characters that we can appreciate it You know, so many years later. So that's not making excuse for a show, because I think some shows have pulled that off. I'm about to start walking Boardwalk Empire. We're going to see if they can pull it off. Maybe they can, you know? I'm trying to think. Uh, the Americans did a pretty good job of pulling it off. That's just one example just off the top of my head. So shows can do it, but I think you have to be extremely good. You have to be very, very good. Very smart. Very light on your feet. To navigate all the minefields that you can hit. You know, and I think a lot of it depends on what kind of story you want to tell. Like, for instance, they could have completely ignored the excess, the sexism in the 60s if that's not the story they wanted to tell. That clearly was the foundational story they wanted to tell with the series. They wanted to talk about that. That's why they had uh, Peggy as a character. She was our entry into the entire series, right? But I think a lot of it is just motivation. What story do you want to tell? So I think, so I think those are the two factors. What kind of story do you want to tell? And how good at you... How good are you at navigating? Or are you just going to play it safe? And I think this show plays it safe. I think that's the final verdict. Like, I haven't finished the series, but that's the final verdict. But yeah, I realize as I'm talking, like, this is going to be a very, very long intro. So I'm going to have this as a separate thing. You can skip it or not. But, um... With that said, you know, the, the reaction will actually start with the next video. So...